All right. Hi, virtual visitors. Welcome to the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Lindsay, and I'm one of the newer members of the education team here at the Sea Life Center. And today, I am so excited to talk to you all about our moon jellies. We're going to talk a little bit about the moon jellies themselves, um, but really, I'm excited to get into their life cycle because they have a pretty wild life cycle. Now, you may be wondering, I'm being very careful to not call our moon jellies jellyfish because they're not fish. Um, and our fish have special characteristics that make them fish. And these guys are lacking something very important that fish have and you and I have. So I want you to go ahead and touch your spine. You've got a spine. Now our jellies do not have any bones at all. Um, they're called invertebrates. You and I are vertebrates. And our jellies are lacking that. So I'm gonna zoom in on our moon jellies. You can see they're about 95% water. So they're very interesting creatures. And not only do they lack bones, but they also lack a lot of vital organs that we might have, um, that we consider vital as well. So they don't have a brain or eyes or heart but they are by definition plankton. So they've got, um, when I think of plankton, the first thing that comes to mind, of course, is that character from SpongeBob always trying to get Krabby Patties, but plankton are um, wanderers or drifters. These animals go with the flow of the ocean currents. They can't actively swim against those currents, but plankton is a vital basis of the marine food web. So they're providing food for all the animals up the web, incredibly important. So our moon jellies, they can't actively swim against those currents. And if you've ever maybe walked on the beach, you might have noticed a lot of those jellies are washing up. And that is exactly why. So our moon jellies wash up, our other species as well. Uh, when that tide brings them in, they can't actively swim back out when it goes back out because they are plankton. They can't go against those currents. So I'm going to zoom in on those jellies once again so you guys can see them up close and notice that they don't have, um, I'm not sure if it's zooming in for you guys. Um, they're not able to um, swim actively. Now, they're also known as cnidarians. So they're plankton, they're invertebrates, they're cnidarians. This is a group of animals that have stinging cells in order to capture prey. Now, here at the Alaska Sea Life Center, we do have our jellies. But we also have a relative of the jellies upstairs that you're able to touch. So once we're back open, you will be able to touch a sea anemone. They have those stinging um, cells as well. And they are really awesome animals. Um, and all jellies do sting. But a good rule of thumb is the longer those stinging tentacles, the harder the sting. So I'm going to see if I can zoom in, hopefully, on our lion's mane jelly, and you can see um, our lion's mane jelly is one of the larger species of jelly out there. They have uh, tentacles that can be up to 120 feet across long, so very long. They're eating larger things like our um, larger fishes, but our mane jellies here at the Sea Life Center are eating brine shrimp. Now this is very uh, tiny plankton. And I'm going to show a quick video of that so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. So you've got our brine shrimp in here. You can see we propagate this here at the Sea Life Center. Um, our moon jellies, uh, Aquarius Kenny just fed them not too long ago. So you might even see some of that brine shrimp up inside their bell, which is that main part of their body. Um, they use those stinging tentacles on the outside edges of the bell to capture prey. Then they use those inner oral arms, which are those longer tentacles that you'll see in just a moment um, that are going to um, capture that prey and go up into the underside of the bell. So I'm going to zoom in on our jellies here. And you can see they've got the, you might see some pink in our moon jellies as well. So we've got our brine shrimp for our moon jellies here. And that's what they're eating here at our Sea Life Center. But 
Uh, like I mentioned before, they don't start out this way. So not only are we propagating brine shrimp here at the Sea Life Center, we're also raising our own moon jellies, which is absolutely incredible. Now, I mentioned earlier, they do have a really interesting life cycle. Um, that first stage is this Medusa stage that you see right behind me. Uh, you think of Medusa, you might be reminded of um, that Greek mythology, the snake, the one with the snakes in her hair. So they'll have those long tentacles that maybe reminded scientists of the um, Medusa character. So what they're doing is they have male and female sexes, and those females are um, able to brood eggs inside. Once those eggs hatch, they will go into the next larval stage, which is um, known as the planula larva. These are itty bitty, very small, and they are, um, have their cilia hair-like structures on their body, and their goal is just to swim, 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 even against those currents, and find a hard surface to attach to. So I'm sure those of you at home may be sitting down right now. I'm gonna ask you all to stand up with me and get active. We're gonna wiggle like those planial larvae, so wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And that larva, their only job is to find a hard surface to attach to. So maybe for you at home, if you find something like the floor or a couch or a chair, go back, go ahead and sit back down. Um, and our jellies out there, our larvae are going to be settling on hard surfaces like rocks, maybe coral structures, um, and that will lead into the next stage. So we've got our medusa, our planula larva. Now we're at the polyp stage. And if you've ever seen a sea anemone, uh, they look a lot like that. So they've got these long tentacles. So I encourage you all to raise up your arms, have, a ten have tentacles. They're gonna be using that to grab food and eat food. And here at the Sea Life Center, we actually raise those jellies, like I mentioned. And I got to see our jelly polyps yesterday. So you guys can take a look. They have these small tentacles that are gonna be used to eat their food. And they're, they can stay in the stage for um, years at a time. So they're hanging out on hard surfaces, capturing food and then they're gonna be able to do something really, really cool. Um, in a stage, um, in the stage they can reproduce asexually in a process called budding, where they can split and clone themselves. So I could be able to, um, I could split and clone myself and bud, and my clone can bud itself, and then pretty soon we would have hundreds of thousand polyps out there capturing food. So we've got all our tentacles up in the air, everybody at home, awesome job. And we gotta get back to that next stage. So we gotta remember, we have to get back to the Medusa stage. So there's a couple more stages here. Um, once that polyp gets nice and big, they can do another really cool process called strobulation. It's a very fancy word, but essentially you can think of it like splitting like a stack of pancakes. So imagine I'm a polyp, I have these pancakes on top of my head, and those can split off. Those pancakes can fly out into the world and split, and that can, each polyp can do that about 10 or 12 times each. And they are moving very small. They're known as a phyra. So if you guys at home look like a little jelly up and down, these are a phyra. These are baby moon jellies. They're back out in the ocean going with the flow of the currents and they're gonna be capturing food, getting bigger, and they're gonna get back to this moon jelly stage, this Medusa stage, um, and the cycle can start all over again. So you can imagine they have this really complicated life cycle, but it allows them to reproduce very quickly and um, increase their populations rapidly. So we're not too worried about those um, populations out there um, in the wild, but jellies are an incredibly important source of food for all kinds of animals out there um, so we are always um, really excited to see jellies out in the ocean. Now, I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today. I'm gonna put the jellies up close so you guys can enjoy um, their peaceful swimming. And uh, thank you guys again for hanging out with us here on our virtual um, classroom. And if you have any questions, feel free to add those um, to the YouTube comments. Uh, check out our Facebook page, check out our website. Um, once again, we're so glad to have you guys here with us today. Thank you.
Uh, actually, it looks like we do have a question. Um, we do have a question from Angie. How do they breathe? That's a great question. Um, so their, um, their skin, their membrane is really thin. They can actually diffuse oxygen across um, their bell. So they're not breathing like you or me or fish. Um, but that's a great question. Thank you so much for asking that. Um, feel free to keep asking questions if you um, do. Um, we'll be able to answer those. But in the meantime, I'm going to put it on our moon jellies.